Uh, now back to football. Man City have scored a seismic victory in their case against the Premier League after new rules on sponsorship deals were branded unlawful. The Times chief sports correspondent Matt Lawton joined Hawksby and Jacobs earlier on today. He explained why this could be significant for the rest of the league. Shareholder loans are the, basically the loans that are the money that is lent to clubs by their owners, by their shareholders. And right now, across the Premier League landscape, there's 1.5 billion quid's worth of these loans. Everton have got over 400 million in these loans. Arsenal got over 200 million in these loans. And prior to this judgment, uh, they weren't deemed to be part of any kind of financial regulation. They were deemed to sit outside. Um, but the judges agree with City that, that they should be part of it because how how vastly different are they to to being given a sponsorship deal mm. by a company linked to the owners? Yeah. And, the, and the knock-on effect of that, we think, is if they now have to be part of regulation because these are interest-free ro- uh, loans, that then it's going to distort, it's going to change you know, I, essentially the return that, that clubs have to provide every year on, on how much they've spent. What does all that really mean? Well, I don't know, but uh, someone that does, of course, he's TalkSport's Chief Football Correspondent, Alex Cook. Cookie, lovely to see you. Good evening. How nice it must be for you to come in in a suit and not have to declare a verdict of not guilty straight away. <laughs> How are you? I was in a suit at Ascot on Friday. Oh, were you? you? Know. So more recently than you two. Yes, because you were waiting tables, that's why. <laughs> are you good? Are you well? I'm good. Yeah, yeah, are you excited to about tonight? it? Tonight's going to be, be great, right? Yeah, it'll be good. I'm very excited about it. Yeah. And we should, we should, fingers crossed, get some lots of big names, including, of course, Farah and Wazza. So that'll be a great evening. Some but, absolute superstars on Drive and, and Bentley. Hey! <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was waiting for something. Yeah, give, you know, give I'll, I'll give them that. Yeah. Uh, listen, let's go back to this, this huge case, a huge ruling. What um, were the unlawful rules in question then? Let's start with the easy one. <laughs> well, listen, it's, it's a complicated issue. No question about that. The document that's been sent to Premier League clubs today is over 160 pages long. Now, I've tried to, to skim read what I can, but I think the key to this... Um, it, is what Matt Lawson was saying there, really. Not so much that City have won their case on a couple of key points, I'm told, uh, when it comes to sponsorship money being paid to clubs uh, via companies that are associated to their owners, uh, effectively, and the independent panel, as you say, made up of retired judges, decided that was unlawful, it was anti-competitive. So that's, that's City's big win. But it's those shareholders' loan that Matt Lawton talked about that's going to impact a lot of clubs in the Premier League, Arsenal and Brighton, uh, to name but two, who've borrowed quite heavily from their owners, from shareholders in recent seasons, often at low interest rate, if not interest free. And Manchester City have argued successfully that those loans should be taken into account as well. So that's really, I think, where the Premier League are going to have to redraft these rules. What's interesting is that I've just spoken to somebody at another Premier League club, and they've said what will simply happen now is that these loans will be converted into equity in order to stop these clubs falling foul of PSR. So, listen, I think what we're seeing now is a lot of these battles are being fought in courtrooms and in front of judges as opposed to on the football pitch. I'm not sure that's a great look for the Premier League. I think it damages the brand. And also, I think it shows the divide amongst Premier League clubs. They can't simply sort these things out amongst themselves anymore without taking legal intervention. There are a lot of clubs who were backing Manchester City, Newcastle, for obvious reasons. Nottingham Forest, I'm told as well. But there are a lot of clubs who were coming down on the side of the Premier League. The likes of Liverpool, uh, Manchester United. I guess, again, you can probably work out the reasons for that. Bournemouth, much lower down the food chain. They were supporting the Premier League as well. So it has become a bit of a wild west. Quick, a couple of things. What will it change going forward? And also, the clubs that you've mentioned there that are going against City... So a club like Bournemouth, is that to kind of bridge the gap because they don't want Manchester City to pull too far away in terms of spending money and the, the size like Manchester United and Liverpool don't want City to be able to gain an advantage in terms of transfers and things? I think certainly when it comes to, to, to United and, uh, and Liverpool, they would see City as direct rivals. You look at the Premier League table now and maybe argue that Manchester United aren't and you would gleefully show me the Premier League table before we came on air. When it comes to clubs like Bournemouth, they need to be bankrolled to a certain extent, because they've got the smallest ground in the Premier League. They don't get as many television games as other teams do because they're not one of the glamour clubs. So I think that's probably why they've rallied against it. Uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers were one of the teams who came down the side of the Premier League as well. And I think City's next game is against Wolves. So that could be quite an interesting ball room. Mm. Do you think this is good for the Premier League? Uh, not overly, for the reasons I've said. Uh, you know, I, I, 
I quite like the system where you get 20 clubs around a table. If you get 14 votes in, in favour of amending a rule, then it gets approved. Now that we're having to get lawyers involved, as I said, I don't think globally it's, it's a brilliant look for the best league in the world. I, I can half understand where Manchester City are coming from, but I think also there's a little bit of a PR battle being fought. City have claimed this seismic victory. I know Richard Masters has been rallying around clubs this afternoon saying, look, it's not, it's not really a victory for Manchester City. They've won on a couple of technicalities. The truth is probably somewhere yeah. in between. The, the, this other case that they've got hanging over their heads, the, I mean, this could go on for months, right, before we get the verdict of... Well, it was set for 10 weeks, and I think we're two weeks in. Yeah, uh, but so then, then it's going to be like another... I'm reading this, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's going to be like another four to eight weeks after to find out what the findings are once the, the case is over. Well, one of the issues I've got with this, and actually one of the management team at TalkSport were asking me earlier, you know, when are we going to find out exactly about these 115 charges? And we don't know because the Premier League have been very clandestine about it. If you remember, Richard Masters was asked by Jim White, when is this hearing against Manchester City starting? And he said, look, we've got a date, but I can't tell you when it is. That's because legally both sides are, are, are bound to, to keep such information secret. But again, I think you need a little bit more transparency. and Maybe there needs to be an amendment in the way these things are done. Obviously, once the independent panel have reached their verdicts on the 115 charges, sifted through all the paperwork, Manchester City will then be given an opportunity to appeal and, and that will drag on the final verdict, the final punishment, if there is to be one, and City have always protested innocence to next year. And then you're getting towards the business end of the season when you know the possibility of a team like City being deducted points has huge ramifications, mm, yeah. not just for them, but obviously the likes of Arsenal and, uh, and Liverpool, you have to say, are the two most serious title rivals along with City at this moment in time. So again, it's not great when you get that final Premier League table, and we had it last season, when you've got an asterisk against some clubs. Is that really what we want? for yeah. trade around the world yeah. for okay. our Premier League. I'm not sure. Uh, you're listening to Drive and Talk Sport. Me, Andy Gosling, Darren Ben, Alex Crook alongside. We are live from the Legends of Football event. We're going to be joined by Farrell Williams and Wayne Rooney a bit later on. It is a posh do if people are watching on YouTube. They're probably looking at you cooking, thinking he's still got time to go get changed. <laughs> so I will let you go, all right? I look forward to having a catch-up with you. I was told, by the way, that um, Sam Matterface is coming tonight, but that's no, not happening now. He's bailed out. Why? What's well, happening? He's, he's got all big time, hasn't he? Yeah. Has he? Is that what it is? <laughs> No, I think he's just never at home, in fairness. Oh, okay. Well, he's not never, he's <laughs> so, never at home. So no. I think he's taken the decision for the good of his marriage. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, we'll leave that there, shall we? Right. Uh, <laughs> still come on the show. I don't know what to say. We'll be joined by England and May United legend Wayne Rooney. First, it's time for No Googling Part 1. Of course, three of them coming your way on the half hour, every hour, as they say. After the break, we're going to be joined by the legendary British band, The Cortinas. Producer Joe is obsessed with them. He's seen them ten times at concert. I don't know. It, nine times. Okay, he's just told me nine. Okay, well, I'm guessing there's going to be a ten. There will be. There you go. There's your ten. Stop arguing with me. Uh, Wayne Rooney actually has the lyrics from another British band tattooed on his arm. And you do? Crookie, do you not know? I think I do, actually. Okay, yeah. well, if you don't, stick around because the answer to that and a whole host of big-name guests coming up right after this live on Drive on TalkSport. TalkSport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.